Market. Hi, I'm Gary Megan, obsessed with food, always on the road, and the road has led me back to my favorite destination, India. I love this country for its color. Oh, it's culture. And mouth-watering cuisine. If only you could taste it. Wow. <laughs> and nothing brings it all together like India's festivals. A shower of flowers! And because of the fervor and frenzy with which these are celebrated, I'm calling them mega festivals. Today, I'm in God's own country, Kerala, which is gearing up for Onam, a mega festival that's celebrated across the length and breadth of the state, by young and old alike, on land, come on, and in water for a whopping 10 days. That is fantastic. And I'm jumping right in. I'll hang out with the tigers, push myself to the limits, and become one with the massive crowds. It's like a chai cappuccino. And eat food. Lots of food. This is India's mega festival, Ona! Aleppi, home to Kerala's serene backwaters and lazing houseboats. This is Relaxation Central, where you leave the hustle on a hammock, a place of peace and quiet. But not today. If you thought that I was in an Indian cricket match, you'd be wrong, because I'm in Kerala at the annual Nauru Boat Race! <laughs> This is it, huh? they're all lining up, the race is gonna start. They've been training for months, they've been watching their diets. Imagine how much hard work this is. And apparently practicing celibacy too. I wonder how true that is. Mm. Can't wait to see who wins. The Nauru boat race is one of many boat races that kick off during Kerala's 10-day mega festival, Onam. Come on! Around 100 people fit onto a narrow snake boat. It's jam-packed. But which team do I support? Have you got a team for today that you're getting behind a boat? Anything which behind? is yellow. Anything that's which yellow. yellow. You see, <laughs> that is a very good way of looking at it, and I didn't think about that. I'll pick red, how about that? But when I arrive at the starting line, the red team is nowhere in sight. However, green team is about to race. So I turn to support them. Yeah. Clearly, I have no allegiance. Ajish, so how long have you been training for this event? One month. One month? How many hours do you practice? More than six hours. Six hours every day? Yeah. Every day. Just for this event? Yeah. Yes. So you're going to win? Yes. You're going to win today? Yes. You're going to win the trophy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The boat is going to come out of the water. There's so much power. The elimination races have been going on all day, counting down to the final four that will be fighting for the Nauru Trophy. And here we go. start the party, the boys in yellow are bringing home the trophy. But the winning team isn't the only one that'll be celebrating. That's because Onam is only getting started. 
It's like the whole of Kerala turns up for one big party. And it's not a one-nighter. This goes for 10 days. Spectacular culture, competition, and of course, food. You know I love food, and there's lots of it. The festival is celebrated all over Kerala, but some of the biggest celebrations are seen in Arunmula and the districts of Trisur and Ernakulam. Musicians, dancers, elephants, and men dressed as gods hit the streets. And then the tiger comes out. These are the Pulakali dancers. Their dance is wild and their makeup is wilder. And the man holding the brush is Jos Kachepili. Jos paints signboards for a living, but during Onam, he makes the human body his canvas. And it's a large canvas indeed. Time to go looking for tigers. Do you know tigers are found in amazingly diverse habitats? But I never thought I'd find a bunch of tigers hanging around here. But then that's India's festivals for you. That's India's mega festivals. And that is Onam. Pulakali means the play of tigers. This art form may have emerged 200 years ago when soldiers expressed a desire to celebrate Onam with a dance that reflected their wild spirit. It's wild, all right. Siyu Desan, the troops' tiger-in-chief, insists on teaching me a few moves. I don't think I have the belly for it. But I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I love it. I want to be a tiger dancer. Turns out the bigger the belly, the better the pulley. How long does it take you to put all that makeup on? But it's tough to break Dessen out of his character. Four hours. Four hours. How long have you been dancing Pulakali? You're a performer. I love it. The Pulakali artists all have day jobs as loaders, butchers, welders, painters, fishermen, and farmers. So they do all of those jobs by day, but during Onam, what are you? Pule! 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 Take it away, boys! The gusto, this frenzy is all to welcome Mahabali, an Asura king. Mahabali's reign was marked with prosperity. No one in the kingdom went hungry. He became so popular that the gods appealed to Lord Vishnu to send Mahabali to Patala, the netherworld. However, Mahabali was allowed to emerge once a year to spend time with his subjects. Onam marks this annual visit. And to welcome the legendary king, people lay out a carpet of flowers called pukalam. Small pukalams are common. But one group of women near Fort Kochi have set out to make one of the largest in Kerala. kilos of flowers has it taken to make this? 500 kil kilos of 500 flowers are brought kilos. from Bangalore. That's a mega yeah. pukulam. Yeah, mega pukulam, yeah. Do you mind if I have a go? So you're matching them up. Twenty women have worked for two days to create this magnificent pukulam that is spread over 500 square feet. And keeping their spirits high, Another group of 75 women put up a traditional dance performance known as Thiruvadira. 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 All right, not all at once. I can't do it again. I will teach you. I will teach you. Thiruvadira. Thiruvadira. 
Tira. 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 Boom. I wonder if the ladies will teach a man a few moves. The celebrations take on different flavours in various parts of Kerala. In Aaron Muller, another annual boat race takes the spotlight. I've already seen one boat race, but this time I want an oar in my hands. Ticket, ticket. I take the ferry to skip the city traffic, but the traffic follows me. It's a traffic jam on a ferry. I love it. I'm gonna go up there. As I come out of the city and onto country roads, I notice tiny villages or kara. People here learn rowing the way the rest of us learn cycling. Kara are where boat races started, and the Aaron Muller boat race retains those traditional roots. Men who've grown up in these Karas may have migrated to other cities, but nothing keeps them away from the boat race. Meet Satya, who works with Google in Bengaluru. But come on, Am, he's back every year training with his team. I didn't realize how big yeah, it is. this boat is. It is huge. How many men on the team? We can actually get about 60, 65 people. 65 people. And I hear, right, a little bird, a little mm -hmm. bird told me that you are like the team to beat. So we won twice the, the, the Bandham Trophy, which is the biggest one. Okay. Yeah. So the, there's a high expectation this year of another win. That's why these folks are really getting ready. Yeah. yeah. Are you, top team? Top team. Top team? Top team. Yeah. Oh. I felt a shiver down my spine, that spine, they're like warriors, you know, warriors. I want to ask though, because this, this boat has got, you can feel the life in it, right? Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's been used a lot. How old is this This boat? one, I mean, we have bought for last uh, several centuries, but this got reconstructed a couple of times. Okay. So this, the last uh, repair or reconstruction was done about uh, 99. Okay. Yeah. So it's got a long, it's got a long history. Yeah. It's so plenty of, plenty of men and boys have sat on these uh, these boards, yeah? yeah. And sweat, it. too. And sweat, too. Well, I'm sweating already, and I haven't yeah. even done anything, so... <laughs> but I'm told I can only step into the boat only in the traditional attire. A wraparound called a mundu and a scarf called a neriyathu. Stretch the muscles before we head to the water. Change now the boats in the water you know the laughs have temporarily gone and you can now realize that they take this very seriously not just because it's a race and they're training but also the weight of responsibility for their community and I like that I mean you know preserving a boat like this um, takes a lot of effort the boats are about a hundred feet in length its stern rises up 10 to 15 feet because it looked like the hood of a snake it came to be known as the snake boat Every person in the boat has a job. The rowers propel the boat forward. Navigators control its direction. And chanters set the rhythm and pace. Now that sounds like fun. But right now, I'm on rowing duty. Sunshine on my back, chanting in my ears, and an oar in my hands. What's not to love about this? We arrive back at the shore to a hero's welcome. I have 
absolutely love that. That was brilliant. They made me feel part of the team, even if it was just for a minute. But that chanting, that tay, 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 pom, you know, it gets you in this kind of rhythm. It's kind of uh, tribal and powerful. What it does is it motivates the team, hopefully, to win. And I'm going to get this chanting right when I come back for the actual race and cheer for my team. But for now, I'm taking a break from rowing and heading to Kochi to get back on familiar ground. The skies pour as I swap the action on the boats for the action at Ernakulam Vegetable Market. This is where Kochi shops for fresh produce. I can't even comprehend is how much produce is on that truck. You know, and I've been on Indian roads a lot and seen a lot of this, but when you see it close up and you see people working hard, it's just, you know, it's next level. During Onam, demand for vegetables skyrockets as many households in Kerala prep for the sadhya, a festive banquet that can have up to 28 dishes. The feast is an ode to Mahabali, whose reign was marked by abundance and a generosity of spirit. Wow. I think that's a snake gourd, I'm trying to remember. There's so many things that I can't uh, identify. Lots familiar, obviously. You know, like okra, lots of different gourds. Watch out, watch out. And I think you've got to be quite nimble in the market, otherwise you're going you're to get collected. But you know what I like about a local market, is you can tell exactly what's in season. How are you? Jacket's coming off, it's getting really hot. In southern Kerala, sadhya is usually served without any meat dishes. Happy Anam! But Kochi is a coastal town, so fish is never far away. Oh, this is fantastic. Like, this is a heady smell of uh, dried fish. It's beautiful. Love it. I meet Shahid, who runs a wholesale outlet at the Ernakulam Vegetable Market. He is busy with the Onam Rush, but is more than happy to be my guide. Watch out, watch out, watch out. We don't have banana leaf shops in Australia, that's for sure. Is it? No. We, we can get banana leaves, because we grow bananas, but we don't, nothing like this. So you know about the sadhya, it's the main yeah. dish of the part of Onam. So the sadhya is actually served on these banana leaves. And everyone's cooking sadia. Yeah, everyone is cooking. So everyone sadhya. needs banana leaves. Families in Kerala okay. is cooking sadia for the. So this is boom time of, of the year course, for course, banana yeah. leaves, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm looking for a gift. Whether a food gift is a good idea, but I'm looking for a gift because I'm going for a breakfast. What do you suggest? So if you ask me, so I would uh, recommend you to get some bananas. Bananas. You know bananas. Right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm Australian. We grow bananas. That was a foolish question. From <laughs> me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I might know what bananas are, but nothing prepares me for the sheer scale or the variety of bananas that arrive here by the truckloads every morning, every day. And everybody loves bananas everybody in Kerala. Everybody loves bananas. You see lots of dishes with bananas in. Kerala cuisine makes use of the banana's versatility. Some varieties, like the kadali, are used for pujas and also in some sweet dishes. Nedrakaya is diced and fried to make chips, while its ripe version, Nedrapalam, is steamed and eaten usually along with breakfast. So, kind of an el elongated end. So, they, for me, they're called a plantain. So, they're starchy. Yeah. You have to cook them, is that right? Yeah, we, we, we do even cook them. So I've seen them steamed and, and eaten with like a, you know, an uppam or a palapam. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, people Pineapple do it. Pineapple chutney, do it, it. mix it all together. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> all right, let's get this one. Look at that. I love it. I'm still not sure that bananas are an appropriate gift because the person who's invited me for breakfast is a descendant of the Kochi royal family. I'm at Chitor Kotaram, a place steeped in history. Yeah, so let's just go up and explore this place a little bit. So Gary, uh, Chitur Kotaram's entrance is now from the road, but earlier, historically, the entrance to the palace was always from the water. Okay, which makes sense. Of yeah, course. because the main mode of transportation in Kerala was water. And it, um, let's be honest, what a magnificent way to arrive at a property. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. It looks like breakfast is ready, and it also looks like it's going to pour. So let's mind. go. I don't mind a bit of rain, and I don't mind a bit of breakfast. <laughs> yes, so let's go. Lead the way. <laughs> Sounds like a perfect start to the day. Yes. Oh, 
obviously Onam is a time of celebration. We, we've got together your family. That's Have we pulled you together against your will? Or is yeah, this... yeah, sure. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't see my <laughs> daughter and son in law. <laughs> Never see them enough. <laughs> Not enough. Is that right? In these modern times, when families have become nuclear, festivals take on an added significance. Grandparents getting the family time they so crave, and a younger generation absorbing culture and tradition over mouthfuls of delicious food. So Gary, this is puttu. So that's rice flour, which is steamed with some coconuts. And we also have this chickpea curry here, which is called uh, kadala curry. It's a proper working man's I was going to say, <laughs> it's not toast and marmalade. Yeah. But you know, even though I'm demolishing this and pressing it into the chickpeas, you can feel that texture and it feels slightly different. It's almost like it's layered. Yes, is it, it is. It is. So um, usually it's layered with rice flour, it's layered with coconuts and it's steamed in a mold. Yeah. So you could uh, customize your layers however you wish it to. But there's also a deeper connection with rice and the entire mythology of Onam itself because Onam also connects with the harvest of rice and the, just the sheer abundance of availability of rice at this point. This is called Ada and uh, it's again made of rice flour. The white is the rice flour that you see and inside we have uh, jaggery, coconut and lots of banana. That flavour is really familiar. I mean, I know this is very traditional, but I'm sure this has made its way back to England in some form because we used to make, mum used to make this kind of coconut, yeah, coconut tart that tasted exactly like that. Yeah, so, you know, brown sugar, coconut, maybe pineapple, stuff like that. So I didn't know, I thought it was like an English dessert. My goodness. Oh, and the bananas that's used in Ada is a banana that you gifted us. Ah, so it wasn't such a bad gift after all. Thank goodness for that, I love it. I arrived bearing a gift. Turns out I'm going to leave bearing gifts as well. A small gift for you. Oh, lovely. This is Onakodi. Okay. Freshly woven handloom gift. No? Beautiful. Yeah. And I, I this, you have to wear this, actually. And no? beautiful gold. Oh, thank you very this. much. Thank you very much. Well, this is a perfect gift because I'm going to Sajjar and I'd love to wear oh. this. Are you going to uh, Trikakara for yeah, the festival? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's the, one of the best sadhyas I'm for the I'm glad you said that because I'm looking forward to it. Would you like to come along? Oh, I would love to join. I haven't been there in a Done. long time. <laughs> and you know why I'm pleased about that? Because I think you can help me put this. From a cosy family breakfast, I head to Trikakara Temple, which is gearing up for a massive turnout of devotees. And one of the biggest sadhyas in Kerala. Uthradam, the ninth day of Kerala's 10-day mega-festival, Onam. Generosity and abundance, the underlying themes of this festival are coming to the fore. And these are the things that are reflected in the Onasadia, which is the banquet or the feast during Onam. And here at the Temple Trikakara, it's one of the biggest in Kerala, if not the biggest. Sadhya is prepared and served on all 10 days of Onam at Trikakara Temple. However, the grandest meal is served on the 10th day. I welcome you to this Trikakara Temple. Thank you. I hear very special things about Trikakara as well. So where do people come from and why do they come to the temple? To add, take part in the Sadhya. Yeah. Take the priest from here, it's a blessing of God. Yeah. So they get all the blessing from God. A huge line is already forming outside the temple, eager to partake in the God's blessings. And to feed these mega number of people requires a mega kitchen. Jai Prakesh, the kitchen's head chef, is roasting lentils as I walk in. This is for payasam, a sweet dish. 10,000 portions of it. This is the biggest pot I've ever stirred. <laughs> it's, you know, this toasted dal smell that I'm sure in India everybody knows, but 
don't think we know this smell. It's kind of, um, you know, wheaty and uh, savoury at the same time. Further on, vegetables required for each dish are cut and kept ready to be cooked. A heady aroma of fresh coconut hits me as I enter the next room. You think coconuts are tough? These machines are tougher. You want to try? The question I was dreading. The coconut shell feels very small in my palms. I just hope I come away with all 10 fingers. I need one for my house. That's incredible. So how many coconuts in here? 500 coconuts. 500 coconuts, yeah. just in these two containers. And then how many coconuts do you use across the whole of? Total, uh, 2,500. 2,500 coconuts. Yeah. There's not much you can really say. This is the spirit of Mahabali. It's the instinct to share the generosity of spirit and the celebration of this festive season. And it's only just beginning because it's a gentle start to what will be a mega kitchen, a mega festival. Outside the kitchen, the serpentine lines keep getting longer. The crowds are lining up to visit Prakakara Temple. Elephants turn up in fine gold drapings, neti pat, and a ceremonial offering of paddy is made to symbolize the harvest season. The celebrations continue into the night as musicians work up a rhythm. Musicians playing percussion instruments and nada swarams. Prakash and his team keep pace with the beating drums outside. So what is this? This is Palada Payasam. Pal Palada Payasam. Palada Payasam. Yeah. And how much is in that pot? 300 litres. 300 litres? And this one? Palada Payasam. So that's six, 600 litres. Yeah. 12 Payasam. 300 litres. OK. So we're 900 litres. Yeah. Nine hundred. Oh, five seven. Plus another line here. Sambar. Tomorrow, this is going to be ground zero, and I'm going to come in at the crack of dawn and see if I can help out. Thiravanam is finally here. I wonder how many people will turn up for the sadhya. 25,000. 25,000. Okay. So to put that in perspective as a chef in all my years, the biggest banquet I've ever done is probably two and a half thousand people. So it's ten times that. That is incredible. Yeah, Prakash is calm and manages to smile a lot. But behind that smile is meticulous planning and a well-drilled team. I notice, Chef, that there's lots of extra pots of water here. What's that for? Well, I'm talking about it. I'm going to drink drinking water. And I'm going to drink the water and I'm going to drink the water. But water isn't the only thing bubbling over. This rice is called mata. The Palakadan mata rice also has a geographical indication, or GI tag, and it's quite popular in Kerala. The rice cooking here has a light pink hue. It feels like a rice with a strong texture. Right now, my hands are itching for some action in the kitchen. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Only only five, no, only 25 more thousand to go. But Prakesh corrects me. They're going to fry a staggering 35,000 poppadops. 
These poppadoms are cooked in coconut oil. In fact, if there's not coconut oil in it or coconut, then it can't be really Carolyn, can it? It's an essential part of the cuisine. And I suppose in a normal kitchen, it'd be a well-oiled machine. But in a Carolyn kitchen, it's a well-coconut-oiled machine. The poppadoms are one of 21 dishes that will be served at the sadhya. Think about that for a minute. Serving 21 dishes to 25,000 people. All cooked fresh, served instantly. It's unbelievable. So, Jai Prakash, what's the most important thing that makes for a great service? In a nutshell, everything is made from the heart. Can't wait for service. A hall in an outdoor area that's been converted into an eating area can accommodate 3,000 people at one go. So the kitchen and service have 30 to 40 minutes to serve the meal, clear, reset, and bring in the next 3,000 people. Wow, feel the buzz in the room. And if you look what's happening, you've got an army of servers feeding thousands of people. And this is not by chance, this is coordinated. It's like a slick operation. Each person carries a bucket or a bowl, puts the food item on the plantain leaf, and then just keeps going, followed by the other 20 that are putting the other dishes on the leaves. I love this. And in kitchen terms, all that adrenaline that was there before service, I join the servers, I need to be precise, and I need to be quick. Let's go. So about this much? Too much? Yeah? More? Plenty? Enough? I need to remember Mahabali's spirit of generosity and abundance and serve larger portions. Oh, we gotta go. I tell you why, because Sambar is coming up fast behind me. But this is like every service in every kitchen, but it's mega service. Happy on them. A little more. And I'm out. Next, I'm on table setting duty. No bowls, spoons or forks needed here, just banana leaves. Hey, Gary. Hey, hello. <laughs> It's like hard at work. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just I'm giving all the big leaves to the yeah. people that want, you know, the most food. I hope you haven't had the sadhya yet. No, I haven't. And actually I'm getting hungry. Yes, let's do it. But I think you need a change first. Oh, I gotta go and find a place to get change, shall we? All right, let, let's yeah. go change. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the mundu. But with Bella's help, I think I look pretty sharp. This looks nice, isn't it? Hey, Can Gary, you... not yet so And I think oh, it's going to be served. Uh, OK. These are all chutneys and pickles? Yes, yes. This is roast coconut. I saw yes, this one. Yes. Roast coconut. With a bit of lentils. Mustard seeds. Yeah. And I recognize this one because it yeah. was cabbage. Cabbage thorin. Yeah. Right. And this is called a pineapple pachadi. Yep. So pachadi, this kind yeah. Of a, yeah. A new entrant, but very popular. A new entrant? What yes. does that mean? So, so I think it was only in the maybe the 80s that ah. this became a part of the I'll have to look it up and see where it came from. <laughs> no, don't touch yeah, it. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So this is called Kalan. So ah. it's yogurt with yep. the elephant yam. There is a certain beauty and ancient wisdom behind waiting for the whole meal to be served. Starting your meal at the same time as all the people around you fosters a sense of community and kinship. You know what I really notice here at the temple is so many different people. I mean, not casting any aspersions, but yeah. from people that you would imagine really don't have any money at all, yes, to yes, other people yes. that have plenty of money and they're here I think all celebrating. Temple lunches are the great equalizers. Everyone starts eating together as soon as the rice is served. You make a nice little... So a little circle in the like center, yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, it's hot. Samba. Samba, beautiful. Wow. Or a oh, wow. <laughs> Such beautiful flavors. It's extra special because of that rice. Yeah. So, you know, like a, a vehicle for all the different flavors. Yes, so yes, the tamarind, yes. you're getting sharp and, you know, you know, almost kind of maple, kind and of it's rich tamarind flavors. And uh, ginger, so it's also good for digestion. I'm having a good time. Yes. It's not a bad way to spend an afternoon, even if we've only got 30 minutes to yeah. eat and get out of here. <laughs> Oh. 
That's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. The next batch of people are eagerly waiting to come in. So Bala and I wrap things up quite literally. Well, thank you so much, because that was a wonderful experience. Yes. And keeping me company during Sadia. Well, absolutely. Otherwise, pleasure, I would have I mean. been eating it alone. <laughs> and maybe yeah, we can yeah. do this again next autumn. Definitely, you should come back next autumn. Autumn yes. number two yes. with Bala. Yes. Thank you so Bye. much. <laughs> See ya. Well, things are winding down here at Trikakara Temple, and I think I've blended in quite well, don't you? But celebrations elsewhere in Kerala had just begun. The boat race at Aaron Muller is the next on the list, and I can't wait. The of Onam has come and gone. But Kerala is in no mood to stop celebrating. In the town of Kunnam Kulam in the Trisor district, an arena pops up by the side of the road. Fabulous, isn't it? If not a little scary. But Kerala has a long history of martial arts, dating back, we think, about 3,000 years. And this is Kalari, or Kalari Payatu, and it originates on the battlefield. And there are forms of martial art performances in Kerala that are rarer. This one looks like a wrestling match of slaps. The crowd's pushing, they're excited, but this is a lesser known martial art called Onathalu. And it's mainly practiced during Onam, which is the name association, Onathala Onam. And it's being kept alive by very few passionate exponents and schools, and they take it very seriously indeed. According to legend, the performance evolved to keep the memories of local battle alive. Today, the setting may have changed, but the intensity of the performers hasn't. Oh, these are the big boys. It's going to be hard. But like any good modern martial art, there are rules. No eye gouging, fingernails, belts, rings, headbutts, or kicks, as it should be. And this is not about winning, but it's about pride. But there's another competition that has pride and prestige attached to it, and that's playing out at Aaron Muller. As I get to Aaron Muller, I find it transformed. The town and the riverbanks are brimming with people. There is a festive fervour in the air. And on the street leading up to Pata Sarati Temple. The temple played a central role in a legend that's associated with that Aaron Muller boat race. According to this legend, a boat loaded with Sadhya supplies was on its way to Pata Sarati Temple when it was attacked. Locals arrived on snake boats to ward off the attack. The Aaron Muller boat race is held to commemorate this event. <laughs> I just have to say, the other day was a really special experience for me. You know, even yeah. the crew said to me, how did you enjoy it? And I said, I was thrilled, you know, so that Brush Ob and yourself just uh, embraced me. Yeah. The whole team embraced me. I know there are other boats in the races. Right. But I'm, I'm cheering, cheer for us? cheering for you guys. Thank yeah. You. Thank so, you. So good luck. Yeah. Each boat is marked with the team's name and number. When you're in the pavilion or when you watch, watch for this. Oh, is it? So number 50. 50. Blessings arrive on the boat in the form of lemons sprinkled with sindoor or vermilion, which is considered auspicious. And then I hear a familiar chant. Time for one final team huddle. 
Prashob, the team captain, carries the boats all to the village temple, where a priest offers prayers. Prashob then leads his team out of the temple and into the boat. This is it. It's game time, isn't it? In an Australian context. We've got a full crew, which is a little bit different to when I was training the other day. I think we had half the crew. And there's a bit of seriousness in the air because obviously captain's trying to get everybody organised in the right frame of mind. And even though they say it's not a competition, of course it's a competition. They want to win. They want to hoist the trophy above their head. But it looks fantastic. Not with just this boat, but with every other boat on the river. How spectacular. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world, would you? Things kick off with a ceremonial procession of the boats, which gives me time to soak in the atmosphere that's building up. As the heats begin, each batch rows hard from the starting line to the finishing line that's 1.7 kilometers away. There are two trophies at stake. One for the team that wins the race. And another for the team that excels at boat decoration. Quality of chanting, discipline, and synchronization while rowing. I keep my eyes on the river, but so far, no sign of boat number 50. These are really tight margins between the races. There's actually nothing in it, certainly with that heat. So I'm getting a little concerned. And I know it's not about winning, but I want our team to win. Finally, I hear the announcement. The batch with boat number 50 is about to enter the heats. The race is on. I want to do anything I can do to help them win. I can't row for them, but can I get the crowd going for them? I know I'm messing up the chant, but I don't really care. I want my team to hear the crowds cheering for them. Here, Jack, sir, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. And before you know it, Others join me, and the crowds join in, and I feel like a viral sensation. Goodness, now we've got some excitement, don't we? And I've lost my voice. But I don't have time to dwell on it. As the boats approach the finishing line, I'm trying to spot boat number 50, my boat. Oh, it is. It is. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh. I don't think they made it. I think they crossed the line maybe second or third. I feel deflated and I can't even imagine what the team must be going through. But I remind myself that this is not just a boat race, it's a tradition, and winning is just a byproduct of all that effort. Though there is one winner, everyone shares in the celebration. And that, as I've discovered over the past 10 days, is what Onam is all about. I've never experienced a festival like Onam. And the generosity and warmth of everyone that I've met has been amazing, if not a little overwhelming. And look at what I've experienced. The Sajja, the temple itself, the Pukulam, 
the men dressed as tigers, and of course, the boat races. But most importantly for me, it was being accepted by the oarsmen. I feel enriched, I feel energized, a mega festival indeed.